How's it going, boys? So today we're playing another great hinge deck. This time it's black plus green because I wanted to uh, alleviate two problems. One, what happens if you don't have a great hinge and you're run uh, running out of cards? Two, can't use planeswalkers. And three, which I am just adding now, live game. So how do we fix a situation like that? Well, with black it's actually fixed. So previously with our other great hinge decks, which is literally somewhere, well, it's not exactly a green hinge deck, but, well, you know, it has green hinge, uh, green hinge, so, well, great hinge, not green hinge, but it has great hinge in it, so it's definitely a great hinge deck. This deck had the ominous problem of, while Return of the Wild Speaker was amazing, it was relatively bad. Because you needed something to combo with. But that was the best way to fix the problem if you just don't draw the Great Hinge. And Vivian Arcball Ranger is a solid 6.3 out of 10, but she's still pretty low on the, on the you know, scale. Because you see, the point is, I can give, give Garuk a solid 4 out of 10, and I'm not even gay. You see where the problem lies, obviously. So yeah. By using cards like Midrite Reaper and uh, Black, uh, I'm gonna call it Black Bridge Troll, not cr Slack Bridge Troll, we kind of can alleviate the problem of life gain and, you know, essentially draw. You know, those cards are pretty good at that. And then we have Garuk, which is just a flat out bitter planeswalker because of the emblem. Also, we can fit now in the Khan's Bastion. Essentially, it's a lot better. This version is kind of a lot better. You can still easily get uh, get the Great Hinge out on 4. Well, admittedly, in this deck it happens a little bit less. But you can still get it out on 4 and whatnot. So that's pretty good. And the Mana Ramp is a little bit worse, but in essence, this deck is a lot more reviable than the Mono Green version. Because remember, if you think that a Mono Something deck does a good job, then there's definitely a 2 or 3 or 4 colored uh, version of that same deck that does it a hundred times more reliably. So yeah, except Red Aggro. Nothing really beats Red Aggro. It's, it's mathematically impossible for Red Aggro to be a, a bad deck. Okay, so let's see. Blue and red. Man, I have faced a lot of blue and red decks. What's happening? Okay, that's actually good. That's actually really good. Let's pretend we're black. Okay. So the point is, gonna drop some Paradisio Druids and gonna draw... Ah. Oh, this is gonna come down to a simple situation of how lucky are we or aren't we. Because we don't re- oh, 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 that's bad. Oof. Well now, ain't, ain't, ain't that a bitch, as some might say. It definitely is, as some might say. Okay, the question is, do we play Garuk? I have a feeling we play Garuk. Or, you know, the cave troll. Oh, 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 what the hell game? Do you even pay attention? Oh, that is not- uh, uh, he's gonna mill my great henge. I can already see that happening. Oh no, he actually milled two relatively useless-ish cards. But yeah, also the uh, next deck we're making is gonna be... Hello there, sweet, sexy, beautiful you. That's actually pretty good. That's relatively really good. Okay, so that gives us a free great henge, and considering he's... Uh, red and blue there's essentially nothing he can really do about that situation and let's see will he block this do i want to attack no i don't want to attack there's no reason to attack essentially but yeah this thing gives you three hp also flying is like a really really bad thing for us to verse oh my god that does not do oh wait uh oof that's all i can say boys oof Okay, he milled Dark Cotton's Bastion. Well, technically it's still all good in the hood. A little bit, a lot annoying, but hey. All good? In the hood. Oh, stop being- I know I have won like, I don't know, five or six games in a row with this deck, but game, please. I, 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 I don't feel like it's fair that I just lose because you want me to lose, you know? 
I, I kind of find that a little bit a lot unfucking fair. Not gonna lie. Anyway, it looks like he's probably sacking something, and the question is, what is he gonna do now? Well, is oh wait, how is he gonna block this? I actually want him to block this with everything he wait. Do I want him to block with everything he no? Then we can't play this thing. Oh, the mistakes were almost made, lads. Also, these things are gonna, you know, uh, in turn keep me alive for an exuberating amount of time that we can potentially, actually, maybe, uh, you know, do stuff, essentially. Also, bla uh, more black, uh, black whatever trolls, so that's pretty good. Okay, I feel we can actually get a critical mass, and next turn we're- Oh! You know what? You know what, boy? You know what? You know what I'm gonna do? You know what I'm gonna do now? I'm gonna send my huntsman after that shit dragon, yo. And he killed my pale elf waifu. She's not a pale elf waifu. She's actually pretty ugly. Uh, but point being, now I need to pay a life to do this. And thankfully it actually worked because I did not do the mad boys, not gonna lie. Anyway, that just happened. And we did that. And now he needs to sacrifice the goat. Ah, oh, the sacrifice of the goats, boys. Oh, look at that, we have a looming shaman now. And if we attack with this, that's 5 HP gain. There's not exactly a lot he can do about that. And again, there is... Wait, is he gonna block with every... The madman! The absolute... Oh, wait, does he just... Oh, is he gonna go full out? I have no idea, and I paid absolutely zero attention to what happened just now. Woof, boys. Okay, so we want, uh... Actually, let's see what do we want back. Uh, probably a Midnight Reaper. Because it's just uh, worth it. Also, it does that. <laughs> uh, let's see. I don't want that. Anyway... I'm gonna attack the Jace, and we have this. It's essentially our secret. And also, notice how our HP is going up. See? This deck essentially does it a lot better than our previous mono green deck. Like, it has less control. I also want to kill that Jace real hard, because he is milling me, and I don't particularly enjoy this activity. Also, it looks like he's just gonna continue doing that crazy stuff. Okay, he puts more mill there. I really want to kill that Jace, not gonna lie. Like, 10 out of 10 would probably... He... 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 He killed my... Garuk! Uh, he just... Killed my Garuk right there. What? What? Why? What, what did Garuk do wrong? Ooh, not happy. Hashtag not fucking happy, boys. Okay. So, considering we're not happy, well, we're never happy, but that's just a part of life. Uh, let's just give this little bad boy haste right there. And now he needs to sacrifice against something, which is gonna draw us a cut. Well, he probably thinks he's honestly milling us, so... <laughs> Okay, so, question time. Does he actually protect the Jace, or what happens now here? Because he needs to understand, probably, that sooner or later we're actually getting the Jace down. He needs to sacrifice one of these. He's honestly not drawing that many cards, and he can't really play that many things. So it's real questionable at this moment in time. What can he actually do to prevent whatever the hell that's happening here? So yeah, as you can see, the appeal of this deck is pretty goddamn big, because the deck- Oh, he just let it happen! Boys, he just let it happen! Ah, uh, okay, let's get rid of the incubation druid. I want the land, because I want to thin out the deck. Also, again, he does not expect the looming shaman to happen. So he thinks as long as he can just steadily do something against me, he- Well, I actually no, I have no idea. Because this deck is also good against token decks, as you can probably tell. Why? Because Trample is OP against token decks. Kill anything you want, and you're probably killing the Midnight Reaper, aren't you? 
Oh no, you're double targeting the shifting centipede centaur. Oof, that's that's one big one. Okay, time to actually reread what this does. White goat creature token. Eh. Well, you need to sacrifice something. Wait. Oh no, he did not do anything. Good, good, good. So the question is, what do we want to do more? Do we want to drop Garuk or do we want to just flat out kill one of these? He's currently drawing more cards than I honestly wanted him to draw, which is kind of a little bit if on the if side, but you know, it's fine. Okay, we still have a lot of lands. Let's see. If we do this, we have five mana left. And that's actually absolutely 100% perfect though. Okay, let's create two tokens, because reasons, and now let's just drop this, and essentially just kill a token for free, because I want to. And now, we can just sacrifice this thing. Oh yes, what a, what, what, what a great strategy, boys, not gonna lie. 10 out of 10 with strategy again. So he's probably doing something here. Oh, he's not doing anything there, because he can't, there's no more goat creatures. Well, that's just life. I actually want to, I don't want to drop this one because it hates goat creatures. Okay, so see, he needs to set. It's like, it's so hard for him to sustain the board against us. It's actually completely batshit insane. He can't really lower our HP points, so his honestly only, uh, only va valuable option of winning is most likely absolutely self mill. Also, I'm not sure if that's smarter or worse, but honestly, who gives a shit at this moment in time? Well, Jace actually just died. I honestly think this guy is just gonna rage quit the moment he figures out we have a looming shaman. And the fact that the moment you kill the Cavalier of Night, we can just uh, resurrect the looming shaman from the graveyard if we so choose to. And he procs the moment he gets on board. Oh my god, you just killed a thing. That is so detrimental to my whatever that I am absolutely whatever. Okay, so next thing he does is 100% something that hurts uh, the pride of Garuk. Well, yeah. Okay, so this guy is doing his up. Oh, actually, since he. Uh, well, since one of these is dead, I'm just gonna replace it also. So, yeah. Because currently, it does seem like an extreme hustle to actually get Garuk to the point where he actually does think I'm a blue. Ugh, oh, it's really annoying. Yes, I know. It, it honestly is. So, the problem is, I need to cover... So, I'm killing the wolf. It doesn't matter if you opt enemy con. You should have probably honestly saved that for my turn, so, you know, things happen. Okay, so let's see how things are gonna happen now. We're gonna drop this because I want to. We're going to be playing instantaneously this, right? Yes, instantaneously playing that. And now we're going to instantaneously be playing this, so it's out of kill range in case he has the ability. He obviously doesn't, by the way, have the ability to draw extra cards, but, you know, still. Better to, better to be safe than whatever. Okay, and so that's pretty good currently. Let's see. So, we're gonna create more Wolfie tokens, and we're gonna, like, put, uh, put, uh, put a little bit of haste there. And, you know, a little bit of reach there. And, you know, a little bit of trample right there. Because we can, essentially. Because we can. I really want to get the emblem, because this deck is really annoying. Okay. He's probably thinking, man, this enemy is not really concentrating on my, on my HP, Toddle. Well, honestly, can you blame me? <laughs> can you actually blame me? Does it look like anything can possibly happen? He, he's a blue-red deck. Well, 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 what's his exact plan against this? Let me tell you a secret. He doesn't have a plan against this. The moment the Garuk emblem hits, it's, it's pretty much GG on ice just from... Oh! I guess he was a little bit unlucky unless he's running like only one version of that. Okay, let's see. Can we magically kill off this? Now we can just create more a more token thingamajiggies. Okay, and we're obviously playing this. Maybe we get a couple of year and then it's actually good. Oh, that's actually also useful. 
Okay, and a Paradisio Druid. Why not, boys? Why not at this point? Oh, more Paradisio Druids? Why not at this point, boys? Why not? Anyway, we actually need to probably give this thing haste. And now we need to sacrifice that to give it trample because, well, essentially I'm just a ginormous fucking idiot. But that's probably extremely expected. So, what's his plan now? He can't block. Well, he can't block these things, but what does blocking those things exactly do? Don't ask me, I don't have the slightest clue. So, what can he do? Even if he uses something, and that something allows him to, you know... Actually, I should probably do the shaman so I don't mill myself on accident. But yeah, even if he does... It should be over. It should be over. It took a long time because honestly, this is a really annoying deck archetype. But yeah. But again, we're gonna do a fade deck. So currently, in my to-do list is... Phase. AKA Fairies. And then there's an unequip deck. Oh yes, boys. So, you know... If you would be so kind to just press the like button on the video and subscribe and b ring that stupid bell notification because that's obviously the only thing YouTube really cares about in life. And leave in the comments should I make a fade deck or an equip deck. Because there is one thing I have looked upon in the card list and it does ex look extremely spicy for a little bit of good old equip decks. So, you know, there are possibilities and sasperels and whatnot in the... Oh! Hey, did he just kill... Yep, he did. Well, I'm assuming he understands of how goddamn over this is. Let me just prove a point by doing this. You know, just, just in case. Okay, and now, let's just add insult to injury. In case he thought that, you know, he's magically just gonna, you know, uh... Millus or something like that. Let's just put all of our... D yeah. There it is. I pretty much... I told you that he's most likely gonna surrender when he sees the looming shaman happen. Ugh. It's so easy being cheesy. Not gonna lie, boys. So much dominance established. No, seriously, a lot of dominance was established, not gonna lie. 10 out of 10 would probably do it again. Well, we're gonna see if we can actually do it again. Also, I'm missing out on... Whoa, 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 what is that? What is that? Uh, nothing interesting, and still nothing inter- well, whatever. Okay, let's look at this now. This is absolutely fine. Why do I have a feeling like I'm not gonna ever get the Great Hinge? Because of this. We also skipped the purple color, which means bad things are about to happen. And we needed to pay life for the Knight of Ebon Legion. Interesting. Oh god, he's gonna kill it. Oh no, he just drops a vampire. A sassy vampire woman. <laughs> Not gonna lie, boys. 100%. Look at the art. It's not actually spectacular, but... <laughs> still. Okay, so next turn we can drop... Oh, hello there. Am I playing... No, I'm not playing up against Sparky. The last time I saw, Sparky only uses this card. Admittedly, it's not really even a bad card, but hey. <laughs> but hey. Okay. So we can drop this, and next turn we can start to drop these potatoes, potatoes. And those are pretty big potatoes. No, they do look like potatoes even. You know, not not even over exaggerating. Okay, he probably has a turn four play. He's looking at the Midnight Reaper and ah, oh, Kaching boys, not gonna lie, fucking Kaching. Okay, that was not even that bad. Ooh, a Garuk. Sadly, we don't exactly have a way to pump up that Garuk. Uh, well, we do have a way to at least play the Garuk now. If he doesn't deal with the Garouk, we're gonna be pre on chill point 10. Because if he doesn't deal with the Garouk, next turn we drop Midnight Re uh you know, after that we just get the Emblem for free. And that's a pretty sweet end. Well, no, seriously, Garouk is so underrated because it's so easy. Hello there, why would you do that? 
Good sprout. Again, pretty rarely used, not gonna lie. Okay, so he's gonna probably attack. I don't actually care too much at this point. You, you can kill the vampire. I, I, I think you think that you have the advantage and whatnot. But, okay, look. We played Garouk. We created two wolfy boys. Next turn, we're getting the emblem for free, and then we get a great henge. Enemy con. Hello. <laughs> okay, so here's the big deal, lads. He. <sighs> no, no one expects exactly this. See? No one expects this. Okay, so we had a way to actually just do that. Actually, sh should I even do this? I don't know. But essentially, now he can't do anything. He's gonna attack with the two thingamajigs. It's gonna be fine, no one cares, who gives a shit? So essentially, we have absolute free reign over this game because of the uh, simple things in life called absolute luck. Oh, that's actually pretty bad. Wait, that does not do anything. Oh no, we just sacrifice thingamabloops. He gonna sacrifice the wrong ones? Nah, he's sacrificing the right ones. A little bit and- Oh shit! No, wait, we can still do it. Yeah, we can still do it. Because we can do this now. Boop. And that's still a 6-5. Thank fucking fully. Honest to god, not gonna lie, boys. That, that, that felt pretty dodgy for a little bit. But now we can do this. Yes, we can do it. Play the Great Henge. Drop the Centaur thingamajig. Even got a land, which makes this situation even a lot better. Do that. Get a little bit more MacGuffins online. And now we can do this and add Trample. And that was absolutely retarded! Okay, so what are we gonna do here? He loses two, he loses zero. FUCK! That was so shit! Boys! Yet again, we have to pay for our insolence. God fucking damn it. Click on the wrong shit ass button, boys. Okay, so now he has a Garouk ready to go, a Lilian, and he has also the... I'm actually pissed. Not gonna lie, actually fucking pissed. He may actually ch No, there's no, there's no reality where, we, where he doesn't just proc the emblem, right? Okay, he does that. Why did we fucking piece of? I'm actually mad, boys. I truly am. That's not that. That, that was not the plan, boys. One hundred percent not exactly the plan. Okay, so let's do this now. Also, the goats, by the way, now are you know a force, and we got a land. That's absolutely magnificent. Okay, the question- well, he obviously probably sacrifices, right? Yes, he does. Oh shit, we actually have a Garouk now. Okay, so... All's well in love and warfare as long as we can kill his Garouk. Let's see. Can we actually- yes, and we can play our own Garouk. So here's the deal. He cannot by any shape, form, or fashion protect his Garouk, so... Obviously, he thinks that he won here. He actually did kind of, but that's absolutely fine. So here's here here's the big one. We do this. Okay, so technically we're ahead. If we weren't complete idiots, it would have been a little bit better. Not gonna lie, but it wasn't. Okay, so he deals the damage. We still have a Lilian to go through. That's a little bit problematic. Okay, we're, we're kind of in an interesting matchup right here. It's like my old deck, only it has Dread Shades. 
The first one we did was an extreme control version. Oh god fucking- Oh god fucking damn it, this game is such garbage! Why does it let me even give it trample when it already has fucking trample? I am so pissed. But yeah, it does kind of give validity to this deck considering, you know, it's, it's, you know, huh. Okay, so he, so the question is, does he attack with everything because he wants to kill the Garuk or not? Okay, so with that much, wait, he's attacking me through two dread shades. Okay. Okay. Ah, oh, he's attacking now with this also. Okay, I'm okay with that. You can lose a land if you want. God damn it, boys. God. That's so fucked, honestly. Honest to God, that's just dumb. Okay, well, the Garug died. Sad. Hopefully we draw a lot of good things because we need to stabilize the situation again. Ah, oh, I'm I'm not gonna lie. I, I am I am I am. Oh, of course. Of course. Yeah, that's that's good. Draw a land game. Well, you know, if you win too much, you need to remember one simple fact: you're gonna lose because the game says so. Okay, so what's the plan here? Oh, well, he sacrifices that. I guess that is definitely plan. He got a little bit out of that, so not exactly the first case situation. Okay, let's see. If we attack with every, we can't attack with every. That's like the worst possible outcome here, honestly. But we're gonna attack with a lot of things because technically we shouldn't still die. And as long as we have the great hinge. It's not exactly that bad. Okay. So he thinks, ah, that's actually gonna save him a little bit. But he does not expect the Karn's Bastion to actually pop. Oh, he actually kills that. And he doesn't kill anything else? Oh no, there it is. There it is. Okay, are you gonna fully commit? Yes, you are. Okay, so that's at least going through. Okay, not the worst situation. Honestly, could have been a little bit if. But, you know, it's something. Okay, so do that. Buff everything because of reasons. And he doesn't expect that one. Okay, that's pretty decent. So, he draws a lot of cards, we draw a lot of cards. The question is, who actually loses in a situation like this? Obviously, the guy who draws too many lands. You know, FYI, if anyone was actually interested in that. Okay, a looming centaur shaman. Not the worst case scenario, but not the best also. Okay, let's see. Let's get back the Garuks, the these things, the Triceratopses. Pretty much, honestly, everything and anything that we can, we just get instantaneously back. Shouldn't be too much of a hustle. And turn. Okay. So, he does have the slight ominous problem of... Does he have a way to resurrect his graveyard? Also, we'll need to kill that Liliana with time, because otherwise it's just gonna get a little bit too frustrating. God damn it! We didn't give it haste, I'm actually so pissed. We just did not give it haste. Absolutely goddamn disgust. Wait, what? Huh? Well, it does get the Resurrect Planeswalkers, so that is a little bit of a problem. Oh, look at that. This guy is a little bit useless. Okay, so I can kill anything with the Cavalier of Night. So that's gonna be use- uh, that's gonna be pretty good. He's gonna continue sacrificing goat creatures. He's not attacking with goat. So he's attacking with this and this. 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 It's four attacks, so I can't block one per se, but that's not bad. He's gonna probably attack my face now? Actually, it's gonna be a lot annoying against planeswalkers, but hey. Okay, what's he gonna do? Droid of Paradisio? Man, this is not sexy at all. Okay, so he has a lot more creatures than us. 
situations like this is why I think I personally need leap androids, honestly. Honest to God, it is. Okay, wait, he's attacking with just one creep. Okay, is he hoping that I block with the wrong thing? Maybe. He can only do it once. So that's still dead. And I actually want that thing dead. Because otherwise it's just too much damage. And we both draw cards. Amazing. 10 out of 10. Would probably draw cards again. Okay. Do this. Okay. Let's get a green green bitsy piece thingy. A paradisio druid. Okay. That's useful. A more paradisio druid. Okay. Again. Useful-ish. Kind of. A hoarded rap uh, raptor scallion. Just made up the name, pretty good, pretty good, not gonna lie. And now the final nail in the coffin, this thing, because I can't let that thing obviously happen. So we're gonna be sacrificing the looming shaman, because reasons, and now we're gonna be killing this, because more reasons. I wonder can he replace his graveyard, though? That's, that's like my big, uh, that's like my big thing. He's obviously sacrificing this. The question is, how much can I actually attack with? We're pretty inching close to our next turn being perfect. Okay, so I do believe that there's a chance... Wait, does it even matter if he Nissa ultis? I don't think it does. We also have Khan's Bastion, which theoretically puts us in a higher advantage role. Because, for example, this is inherently... You know, if we have even equivalent cards, it just means my cards are better, because he doesn't have a great hinge, it seems like. Well, if he does have a great hinge, then he has done a fantastic job of actually, like, you know, hiding it. So, yeah, also, he can't just flat-out attack me for... Hmm... Questionable, to say the least. But that's okay. Well, he plays the Murderous Rider. Okay, so he has Murderous Riders, which is gonna be really annoying. A bit of vampires that no one cares about. Huh. He can't attack me willy-nilly because I have a Cavalier, and that's gonna be a big, big problem for him, essentially. Okay. So what do we do here now? He probably doesn't attack. Yeah, he doesn't attack. That was pretty self-evident. Okay, so we play this. We play as many cheap things as humanly possible. Because we need to play cheap things. Because we're kind of hoping to get uh, get a big hit on something that we really want. An incubation druid is pretty good because, you know, it has a counter on it. Uh, more of these things is not actually bad, but do I want them? Oh uh, no. Okay. Play that because it's useful. I really probably should start playing these, huh? Or something. Well, uh, let's just first play this and see what happens. I'm not, by the way, replaying the Great Henge on purpose, if anyone's actually wondering. Okay, so what can we attack with? We can attack with this. We can attack with this. And this. That. Let's see what happens. He must block 100%. But the thing is, he's going to lose things now. Okay, he loses that. Yeah, we're, we're, in a, we're in a relatively interesting matchup. Okay, he so he exchanges that like that. That's fine, it seems like. Okay, let's see. Too bad I can't do this. And yeah, that would have been actually excellent. But life is life. Okay, so the Nissa can't really do the ulti, because of reasons. Still drawing a lot of uh, cards, which is useful. And he's drawing a lot of cards, which is, well, the exact opposite of useful. But we have shown enemy Kun that we have 100% what it takes. Okay, that's good, that's good. That's, a, that's what you call free fucking emblem, boys. That is exactly what I want. Good. Okay, gonna drop this, gonna drop that. And gonna continue dropping more of those guys, because I don't know exactly Okay, where the hell is my blooming sh- 
Thick and bloom coming, not in the hand. So yeah, I'm just keeping the grave hinge around in case he actually does some. Yeah, you see, in case he actually does something like that, I just want that great hinge around. Okay, getting a, a, a land though is not exactly bad for us. But yeah, that's again why I'm keeping the great fucking hinges around. In case he does that. Because that's pretty detrimental to my moral being. Okay. So the thing is, we can instantaneously... I need him to be out of mana. I can't risk an assassin's trophy or, you know, uh, what's, what you might call it. <sighs> we do have an overwhelming... Oh, yes, that is good. That is absolutely phenomenal. Okay, good, 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 good. Actually, it's not exactly good, 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 but close enough. Okay, that means... Yeah, tw 23 is... Actually, do I need to kill that? <laughs> oh yeah, no, we're gonna be able to kill it. There's absolutely no problem with that. But anyway, we get a free emblem now. There's no way we don't, essentially. He's not attacking because reasons, obviously. He can't attack because the attacking does not do anything, because my things are one stronger than his, and we have a Cavalier of Night that does MacGuffins. So, he does have essentially a little bit of monolith, but what does that exactly do? Probably not a lot. Okay. So, also, do we have a decent tree drop we can We attack with this guy? Probably. Okay, so we need to kill that Liliana now, pretty much on stat point right there. Okay, good. So, first things first, do this in case... He's gonna be using an assassin's. It doesn't look like he's using an assassin's trophy. Okay, in that case, drop the Garuk. Do this. Proliferate like a madman, the absolute Chad man. And now minus uh, minus this and get an extremely buffed up version of the emblem of gods. Okay, and now we can do this. Oops. Where is the oops enemy, Kun? I honestly don't know. Actually, I don't also care, but that's fine. Okay, and now we can kill the Hydra, because I don't like it. And now this guy is in a whole world of goddamn trouble. Oh, that's just one more Garuk to add to the counter. <laughs> uh, can I actually... Is that useful? I think it is. Eh, whatever. Okay, so now the thing is like this. Essentially, he is forced to defend against what I'm doing. Three attacks is fine, right? Yeah, three attacks is going to be 100% fine. Okay, because we have two Cavaliers of Night, and those Cavaliers of Night are going to outheal pretty much any damage this guy does. Alone, they're just worth like half his goddamn army. So that's a thing. I wonder will he even block? Because if Planeswalker is honestly the best way this guy wins? Oh no, he doesn't even block. Okay, so let's see if he actually miscalculated. And that's not exactly hard because I didn't even fucking calculate. To begin with. Okay. So yeah, but these two Cavaliers are worth essentially each three units. One, two, three, one, two, three. So yeah, we do win the exchange essentially. That's why you want to have life gain in your decks, boys. That's really why you want to do that. Okay, let's see. 30 cards left in deck, 15 cards left in deck. So you can see which deck is arguably doing a lot more, more sexy stuff. Okay. So he's not gonna attack. There's no way he attacks, right? That would be absolute. Is he just trying to kill me via. for negligence? It does look like that a little bit. Well, here we have the Garuk. Which he probably really, really enjoys. Too bad I don't have Vigilance, though. Vigilance would absolutely kick ass. Okay, so what's my next move? Do I just Garuk again? Because my Garuks are better? 
I need to kill his... Okay, can I actually go for the throat here? One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine. nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, nine half. Now nah, he's surviving with like 10 HP or something like that. Yeah, he's surviving with 10 HP because in reality he needs to use two units. Whoa. Hello there. That was actually a smart move, enemy con. Not gonna lie. That was pretty smart, but the problem is, I still get a MacGuffin out of that situation. So you essentially just got absolutely nothing but put more cavalry years of night in my deck because I have a way to resurrect my graveyard. Because I don't leave home without that. Okay, I want this back. I want this back, this back, an extra Great Hinge. Actually, the Great Hinge... Ah, no. This, that, this. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, at a certain point we're gonna have to start to alleviate and resurrect our uh, lands also, but that time is not here yet, so I'm kinda okay with that. Also, it's really questionable why the fuck you would use the minus three. Is he actually planning to do the hit? Because the hit's not gonna work out. If I survive this because he miscalculates, he's still dead. So essentially, what the hell is happening, I have no clue. But that's what happens when you're facing against... No, he should have been dead like 50 million hours ago. But the problem is we let him accidentally own a Garouk emblem. So, boom. Oh, maybe he's actually doing some calculative math and whatever. Because if he kills that last couple of year of night, he does win. Let's see, does he attack? Does he attack with everything now? I have a feeling he might. Now what does he do? What is his decision? He can attack with everything? Yes, he's attacking with everything. Okay, so first things first. That's a lot of attacks. That is actually a lot of attacks. So first things first, we're going to be killing off the lands. A little bit of his drop over because it's a little bit annoying. And then we're going to be blocking against the biggest MacGuffins. One, two, three, four. Ah, we're dead with minus one HP? No way. Are we actually dead with minus one HP? No, we're not. He loses. Now we're dead with my- oh, the second time I counted, I didn't see this shit. Oh, that was a little bit shit. Well, that happens. I- I kind of, you know, yeah. Well, honestly, if I was him, I would have surrendered because I, I- I would understand that I actually lost because, you know, didn't pick haste but chose trample and when the creature had trample. But I do think we established a huge, ginormous amount of dominance. Also, this deck is fun, and this deck is really good, because of reasons. Anyway, so this was Quasar Sensen. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out my channel, check out the Discord, check out the Patreon, check out the whatever. And have a nice day. Bye-bye.